Today I'm going to show you how to make an erupting volcano using oven bake clay. We'll make our volcano erupt with baking soda and vinegar. So we're using an oven bake clay because that will be something that we can get wet. If you use regular modeling clay, you would ruin it when you added liquid to it. The type of clay we're using today is called Sculpey clay, and you'll need about eight ounces of it, a half a pound. The first step is to preheat your oven to 275 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, take your clay and split it into two equal sections. You can use your hands to roughly do this, or you can use a knife to cut it in half. Take your first section of clay and go ahead and work it into a ball. As you start working with the clay, it will be crumbly, but as you move it around in your hands, it will start to become more flexible and easy to work with. Once you've got a ball, then go ahead and flatten it into a circle. Next, take your circle and continue to press it down until it's no more than a fourth of an inch thick. You wanna make sure that everything you do with this clay is between a fourth of an inch and a half inch thick. If we get it much thicker than that, um, then it will not bake properly. Now we're gonna go ahead and create a base for our volcano. To do that, just take a cup and press that down into the bottom of the clay. That will give you an imprint that will be a nice round circle. And we'll just use that as the starting point as we shape our base around it. Now you're gonna take the edges and go ahead and fold that up around the imprint. So it starts to look a little bit like a shallow bowl. Now, of course, for our volcano, we are gonna need a bottom to it because we're gonna pour vinegar into it and we don't want that leaking out the sides. If you think about a real volcano though, it doesn't actually have a complete base that's solid and blocked off. Instead, the magma that's gonna erupt from it is coming from the mantle. So of course, it's not completely closed off on the bottom like our volcano would be. Now we're ready for our second half of the clay. Go ahead and take that second half and just like the first one, work it into a ball. It'll be crumbly at first and then it will start to become more flexible as it warms in your hands. Then of course, take your ball and go ahead and press and pinch it. Um, and make sure again that it is no more than a fourth of an inch thick. Once you have that worked into a nice thin sections, go ahead and tear it into three sections. And again, they don't have to be very precise, just kind of rip it until you have three separate sections. Now we're gonna use those three sections to build the walls of our volcano. So add your first section to the base, and then it'll take a little while to pinch and press and smooth it away until you've worked that into your base to make it the first wall. Next, add the second section to the base. And just like the first one, it'll take some pinching and pressing and smoothing and rubbing away um, to get any of the cracks worked out and to go ahead and combine it so it's nice and smooth on the base. And finally, go ahead and add in your third section of the clay um, and pinch and press and smooth it away so that you have a complete bowl to it. Now it's okay as you start off if your bowl is not is kind of jagged and rough up at the top, we're gonna work with the clay to even it out. If you also look at our clay, it was kind of wide and we wanna go ahead and make it narrow. So to do that, we're gonna take this and go ahead and pinch some of the sections of it. So just kind of take a part of it, make a bulge and pinch it um, inward. So here's what it would look like from the inside, here's what it will look like from in the outside. Once you've made that little pinch section, you'll wanna go ahead and press and flatten it into the walls around it. And the reason we're doing that is because that little section will add extra clay that will help us to pinch and press and make the side taller. But also as we're pinching in the sides, it will also start to make the volcano more narrow so that it will get that volcano shape. 
So we'll continue to press together small sections. You can kind of see how it almost looks like a little flower or ripple as I'm working with it. And so I'm making these little sections that are pinched in and then I continue to press them up against one another. And it will take a while to do this, but as you work it through and smooth and press those sections together, eventually you will work out a volcano cone shape. And when you do have that final cone shape, you want to make sure, and you have to pull it open if you need to, that your opening is about two and a half inches. If it's skinnier than that, it will be harder to get the baking soda in and out. And if it's much wider than that, um, then you won't get as good of an eruption because you won't have the gases building up inside of it. Before you bake it, the last step would be to just check your entire volcano over. You want to make sure that you don't have any cracks in it um, where the vinegar would accidentally leak out. Um, so we want to smooth it out completely um, so that the liquid won't leak out. In a real volcano, oftentimes there are actually cracks. And so a lot of times the, the magma won't just erupt out of the top of the volcano. Often there are these little cracks called fissures and the magma will get stuck in there or it will erupt out the sides. But so that we don't make a big mess, we want to make sure that we have all of it completely sealed off. Now you're going to go ahead and bake your volcano and you can either put it in a glass baking dish or you can put it on a cookie sheet. I personally prefer using the glass baking dish because then when I pull it out and I'm ready to add vinegar to it, um, it won't make a mess that the sides of the glass um, dish will be tall enough to help keep the vinegar um, from leaking out everywhere. Now you'll go ahead and put your finished volcano into your oven. And again, you've already preheated your oven to 275 degrees. And now go ahead and let it bake for 15 minutes at that time. It is important not to over bake it. If you bake it too long, then it will become brittle and break easily. After 15 minutes, you can go ahead and remove it from the oven and let it cool for about 30 minutes. Now you're ready to go ahead and erupt your volcano. So you do want to put the volcano into a shallow dish, something that will hold the liquid as it erupts out of it and add about two teaspoons of baking soda down into your um, volcano. The last step then is to go ahead and pour in a half a cup of vinegar, and I added red food coloring to make it a little more fun, and watch it erupt. And rather than me showing you a boring teacher video of me making my volcano erupt, I thought you might enjoy this video of my son when he was three years old doing an erupting volcano with me. Today is April 5th, 2013, and today Josiah and I did a special project. Tell them about it, Josiah. It's a volcano, and we made it with Play-Doh, and we painted you, and we're trying it out. Okay, and what did we put inside of it? Some, some baking soda. Some baking soda, and what do we have in the cup with red food coloring? Uh, vinegar. Okay, all right, are you ready? Yeah. All right, pour it in. <laughs> what happened? Now you might not explode with enthusiasm quite to the level of my son when he was three, but I know you'll have some fun with this. If you want to repeat it, it's just baking soda and vinegar. Um, and then when you're finished with it, you do want to take some time to rinse out the inside of it, add a little water and get any residue of baking soda out and let it dry before you try it another time. Have fun.